Hello Cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome, and if it's not, welcome back. It is Tuesday, the 8th of May, 2023, and this is a YouTube premiere, rather than our usual live show. Why? Well, Wayne and I had an interstate trip, and I wasn't exactly sure if we would be home in time for me to do a live show. So I've set it as a premiere because that means you can all still chat and comment and ask your questions. And if I'm able, I can join in too. Because I like to um, know what you're thinking about our shows. And of course, it's budget night in Australia. So I'm sure some of you will be watching our Federal Treasurer make his announcement. And of course, being budget night, I thought it the absolutely perfect opportunity to go over this week's topic and share how we in our family stay on budget and maintain our cheapskates lifestyle, even with rampant inflation and shortages and all the other things the world is throwing at us. Now, before we get started, if you have a question, if you could um, put a capital Q and then write your question all in capitals so it stands out in the chat, I'll be able to find it um, later on and come back and answer your question for you. And if you don't have live chat enabled, ask your question in the comments below me and I'll get back to it as soon as I can to um, join live chat you do need to be logged into your YouTube or Gmail account and that's a YouTube requirement not a cath one for a change anyway let's get started we as in Wayne and I have lived the cheapskates way for almost 30 years and that's a long time it's a long long time so over those years I have tried so many ways to stay on track with our budgeting, to maintain our lifestyle on what has sometimes been an almost negative income. And yeah, there were some jobs that we did that almost cost us more than they brought in. But the one thing that made the biggest impact and has been the um, most beneficial was actually a mind shift, an attitude change, if you like. We consciously made the decision together as a couple to ditch the unimportant things in our lives that were costing us money, taking our time and energy, so that we would have the cash to spend on the things that were. Making the decision was the easy part. The hard part was actually doing it because we also had to do those things. And things, real things, like not go out with everybody else so that we could maintain a lifestyle on what was a very, very tight budget. You might remember me saying that back then I had $200 a month to spend on groceries, on medications for the baby, that was it, $200 a month. Couldn't go $200.01 because there was not one cent to spare. So I thought I'd share five things I do even today in 2023 to stay on budget so that we can live the cheapskates way easily. We all want to be debt free. We all want to be cashed up. We all want to be laughing. So I thought I'd share how we do it. The first thing is track my spending. I know it's not popular. I know it's not popular out there. People think it's a waste of time or it's too, too hard or whatever. I track my spending. It works. I need to know, you need to know where the money that's coming in is going. 
I need to know it so I can control it and you need to know it so you can control it. If I'm overspending, I can see straight away where it would work for you too. If you were overspending, you could see straight away where you were overspending. Does it take time? Of course it does. Everything takes time, folks. It takes about 10 seconds to drop down when I spend money. Less than five minutes at the end of the day to tally it up and see where it's going. Is it worth my time to do this? Absolutely it is. I know exactly how much I spend, how much we spend as a couple, how much we spend as a family, and exactly where it goes. I know exactly to the cent how much is in our budget. That's not being um, overzealous. <laughs> That's being really smart. If you don't know, you cannot control it. What it means for us is we don't overspend. It means our bills are paid and paid on time every time. That and that alone gives me great peace of mind. So if you're not absolutely certain where the money goes or what it goes on, it just seems to disappear into thin air try tracking your spending start with a week move to a fortnight do another week by then it'll be a habit and you'll just keep on doing it you'll find you will be able to control your spending so much better you may have always thought you controlled your spending Sometimes it might not seem like it because of the choices you make. Give it a go. It is worth the few seconds it takes you to make those records. The second thing I do is check the balances on our bank accounts every day. I have done this for years. I like to know if the direct debits have come out, if any transfers have actually been transferred and every day especially now I check for random phantom call them what you will fraudulent charges just recently this has been so important to us and I will be doing a show about this but it's kept in the last couple of months almost $100 in my everyday account simply because I check and I notice within hours random charges. One was an Uber charge on my debit card. First off, I don't use Uber and I hadn't been in Sydney on that Thursday. I spotted that charge straight away and I was immediately able to contact my bank. They were on it like white on rice. The charge was reversed a couple of days and I had that money back in my account, no questions asked. Now, if I wasn't so pedantic about checking balances and charges, I may have missed it and been out of pocket um, $98.60. Not sure about you, but I can't afford to give away $98.60 just because I'm careless or lazy takes me about three minutes usually less every morning as I drink a cup of tea and I check my to-do list and it's done for the day three minutes <laughs> work this out three minutes to keep 9860 in my bank account was well worth it absolutely well worth it that's um nearly two thousand dollars if you want to transfer it to an hourly rate it was well worth it so if you don't do this, if you don't um, check your balances regularly, may I suggest that you start? Um, if not daily, at least weekly. And if you find a charge on your account that you don't recognise, 
contact the bank and ask for more details. Now, sometimes the charges will come through and they'll be under valid charges, but just under a name that you're not familiar with. It is fine to ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. Perfectly okay to be vigilant and ask. And your bank will be able to help you. And if it's if it's a wrong charge or a fraudulent charge, they'll follow up and they will get your money back for you. And that, you know, it's your money. So you should have it. Number three is pretty much common sense. I make my tea and coffee at home. It saves money, saves time, saves energy. And I get the cup of coffee or tea that I like. It's not hit or miss, depending on the barista, you know, their mood, the crowd, how busy they are. It's the way I like it. I like strong coffee, whether we have it hot or cold. Now, we have an Aldi Expressi, and I use the Aldi pods. I usually buy the pods when they're on um, bulk buy sale twice a year. And this brings the price down to almost half. So a whole um, cup of coffee, including the milk, is 48 cents. 48 cents as opposed to $5.50, $8. Is it worth it? Oh, yes. And it's the strength I like and the temperature I like. And you know what? But 48 cents, I can afford a cup of coffee. I won't say I can't afford the $5.60 that our local coffee shop charges for a small coffee, but I wouldn't want to do it all the time. In fact, I don't even like doing it once. But, you know, 48 cents I can afford and I can drink guilt, guiltless, guilt-free. And then I buy the tea I like on half price sale. Now, currently, half price is $6.50 a box. Yikes. It's gone up in the last year. Um, gone up about $1.10 a box in the last year on a half price sale. So $2.20 a box, full price. That's eight cents a tea bag. Add a splash of milk, perhaps a tablespoon, about 15 mil. And the cost of a cup of tea made at home, to my liking, in a mug, a china mug that I actually like drinking from, costs less than 15 cents. How much does it cost to buy a cup of tea at a coffee shop? A lot more than 15 cents. Now, this little strategy isn't anything new, but sometimes a gentle reminder of how much the little things we buy just out of habit actually cost, well, that can be um, a light bulb moment that makes a huge difference to our thinking, which goes back to number one, changing our attitude, and to our budget. Number four is a favourite tip of mine and one that a lot of people seem to think is hard work and not worth the effort. And that is simple, cooking from scratch. Now remember, I stock ingredients in our pantry, so I have options when it comes to meals and treats. But cooking at home is faster, it's easier, it's cheaper, it's tastier to cook from scratch. It's more healthful to cook from scratch. And you don't need to be a master chef because, trust me, I am not even close. I have a few recipes I make well that we all like that are consistently good. We use those a lot. If you get my meal plan, you'll notice that. Um, if you don't get my meal plan, it's in the weekly newsletter every week. And if you don't get the newsletter, you can sign up below me. The other thing is I love double up cooking. Sometimes it's even triple up or quadruple up. <laughs> Depends what I'm making. And I put the extra meals in the freezer. Having a stash of 
ready to heat meals in the freezer means no more giving in to the takeaway or drive through or home delivery wants. The I can't be bothered getting dinner, so let's just pick up the phone or order online. These days we find takeaway and even a lot of the restaurant meals we eat, we don't eat out very often. It has to be a really, really special occasion. Maybe twice a year we'll splurge. We find them rather disappointing compared to the quality of the meal we can eat at home. And that's with me cooking, me cooking. And when I say cook from scratch using ingredients, I mean just that. I get out the flour, I get out the spices and the vegetables and the meat and I follow a recipe. There's a million of them out there. We've got heaps of them on our website. Oh, sometimes I'm more a think what I like and try to make it cook. But, you know, whatever. Following a recipe, using ingredients we have at home by measuring and weighing out those ingredients saves us money, saves us time, saves us energy. I don't get out a box and add water and an egg. To me, and this is just my opinion, that's not cooking from scratch. It's using expensive convenience products as a cheat to cook. It's still better than buying whatever ready-made but it's not as it's it's not quite what I do and cook from scratch. But you know, on the levels of cheap skating, you're getting up there if you can do that. If you're not a cook, and I am really not a cook, choose simple dishes. Don't go all fancy schmancy and you know the first time you cook something from scratch. Choose something simple, pretty basic. Because cooking is like everything else. You have to practice. The more you cook, the better you get at it. You get better skills, you, you learn more, and you become quite good at knowing what goes with what. The other thing for meals, don't buy bag salads. Those things are super, super expensive. Um, a quick check for me this week. $26.60 a kilo for lettuce mix. $33.34 a kilo for baby spinach. And it grows so easily, even in a pot. $21.43 a kilo for chopped kale. And it grows easily too. So why anyone would grow it? We do not like kale. So don't waste your money on buying bagged veggies. You can buy a lot of salad veggies for $33.34, easily enough to last a family for at least a week. If you don't know how to prep salads for the week, watch my video. I've linked it below for you. That shows you how I prep all our salads enough for the week and they last the week too. And I can assure you, they do not cost anywhere, anywhere close to $33. Number five, and the last for today at any rate, is another oldie that just makes sense. Shop with a list. Doesn't matter if it's on your phone or written in a book or chicken scratched on the back of an old envelope. Take that list with you when you go shopping and then stick to it. If money's really tight, you really need to stick to the list. Now, an advantage of having a list and of living in 2023 is that you can check prices before you shop. So you know where you're going, what you're buying, how much it's going to cost. And check your price book and jump online and check the prices at your closest supermarkets. Then go shopping with the prices in next to your shopping list, on the items in your shopping list. It may mean that you need to visit two or three different supermarkets or grocery stores to get everything on your list at the lowest price. But with rising prices and grocery shortages, 
We'll all be doing this if we want to stay on budget. It will become a part of our routine. Someone's going to go, I don't have time for doing this. So is your grocery shopping going to take you longer? It might take 10 or 15 minutes longer. Most of us here in Australia, we are blessed with having at least two of the three major supermarket chains nearby. Often, if you're in a capital city or a bigger city centre, often all three are in major shopping centres. So it just means work, uh, working, walking from store to store. Now, until recently, very recently, I had to go to three different suburbs if I wanted to shop the three majors. But it was worth it. It was worth a five-minute drive to be able to spend less on groceries. I was keeping more in my budget than I was spending in time and fuel. I mentioned sticking to the list, and for so many shoppers with a list, it's not the sticking to it that blows the budget out of the grocery bill. It's um, little things. So think about why you can't stick to the list. Is it because you don't really write it up with everything you need before you leave home? Is it because you take the kids with you or your husband or partner and they ask for things or add things to the trolley? Is it because you think you need to buy every single bargain you see because it's a bargain and you know you'll use it even though you don't actually have room in the budget for it right now? Or is it because you faithfully write up a shopping list and then leave it at home or completely ignore it? So many people ignore their shopping list. Next time you go shopping with your list, think about um, your overspending triggers. Try really hard to be aware of them as you shop. So you just so you can win the grocery shopping game and stay on or under budget. Yeah, you do have to put some effort in. But you know what? You have to put effort into anything that's worthwhile and even a lot of things that aren't worthwhile. In fact, some people put more effort into things that really aren't worth it than they do into anything that is worth it. Anyway, there you have it my five tips or hacks or strategies, call them what you like, that I use um, in 2023 to save money, to save time, to save energy and to keep us on budget so that living the cheapskates way is fun and profitable and so it works for us in our lifestyle. Before I go, thank you so much for watching all the way through and subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, click that subscribe button, then the little bell. It ensures you never miss a video and you'll be amongst the first in the world to see new shows when they're posted. And please feel free to leave a comment. If you have a question, please ask it. I read every comment. I do my best to answer any questions you may have. And if I can't, then I know someone else in our wonderful community of cheapskaters will. Lastly, if you know someone who might like this video, please click that share button to send them the link. With three simple things, like, subscribe, share, they help our channel grow and to be recognised more easily. And the easier it is to find us, the easier it is to spread the message that it is not only okay to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing, but it can still be done even in today's crazy world. I've been back with back with another video to save you money, time and energy very soon. But until then, happy cheapskating, everyone.